They're beautiful. I love them. I brought in nine or seven or eight pairs of wheels mm. over the last three months, and you keep saying, when are you bringing back in the creatives? Because yeah. you like them so much. Why do you like them so much? Predominantly the hubs. Okay. <laughs> so before Aaron continues, I want you to know up front that the speed test that I have completed on these, creative 45 millimeter hook rims with extra light hubs valued at 2,649 AUD or just over 1,800 USD are by far the most compelling speed tests I have ever completed on the same four segments I typically do on a low wind day. So compelling that I don't really want to take these creative wheels off the BMC anytime soon. External to one issue for me anyway that I'm going to share with you during this video and I just want to say up front as well that while these guys are an Aussie based company, they have set up a supply chain to service an international market. So if you're interested in these wheels after this video, there will be a non affiliate link below. But like most other wheels you've seen on this channel in recent times, these wheels were provided to me for free, but Creative aren't paying me in money for this review. Back to Aaron. So we got the Cyberlight made by Extra Light Hubs or Extra Light, sorry. Um, Are you in bed with Extra Light? No, I, <laughs> I like them a lot. Okay. Um, no, it's a premium product. Yep. Handmade in Italy. Everything you've brought me so far is either a Chinese hub. Yep. Or DT Swiss. Or DT Swiss obviously is not, and that's still a premium hub set. But you didn't bring me in the top of the range DT Swiss. Yep. Anyone who's into wheels or all their wanky bike parts, they're going to know about Extra Light. Okay. Both stems hubs, everything, they do everything. They do so many parts, they are just super high quality. Yeah, I mean, I like the rims. The, the wheels seem like really good quality. Obviously they get built in Melbourne, so their rims are produced in Asia. Um, they get handmade in Melbourne. They're using Sapham CX Ray spokes. They're using options of, I think you have different hub options, don't you? Yes, from, you do. from those guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, but they've just obviously sent you, you know, creme de la creme. Extra Light do four, I think it's four or five, no, four different hub bearing options as well. Yeah. So you can go from absolute, like ultra high end ceramic, a lower level ceramic, a steel bearing, and then an ABEC 5 bearing as okay. well. So they do four bearing options. Okay, is, this, is that the lowest level? This bit? is the lowest level one okay. that I can see at the moment, which is ridiculous. They have micro, micro adjustment on the hub. They get set up from the factory in Italy, so they are perfect out of the box. 100% Italian made. The bearings won't be Italian made. Like the CNC on them is beautiful if you look at them, obviously. So yeah. When we see stuff day in, day out, it's something nice to look at. So with Extra Light, they actually have a lot of information on their website for people to do their own servicing, etc. on them. You can do micro adjustments. They do have service interval requirements as well. If you're in very, very wet weather, if you're in Europe or if you're in Melbourne or Tassie and all that kind of stuff and you've got a lot of rain, a lot of water, you should be servicing like every three months. Wow. So you strip the hub down, you make sure everything's nice and greased, put it all back together again. Normal dry weather, I think is like, six six to ten months or something they recommend for normal servicing which is probably a lot more than anyone would ever do on their normal hubs okay but if you take care of them they're going to last you a long time because they are expensive right and then if you leave them dormant for a while if you don't use your bicycle and you go on holiday for a couple of months they suggest a full strip down as well wow. before you even ride it wow. yeah so you can read about all that stuff so for me as somebody who doesn't like to get their hands dirty and also for somebody that tends to leave carbon wheels sitting around in their office for weeks if not months on end the sensitivity of the hubs does cause a little bit of an issue for me anyway. So I guess the question is, would I be willing to deal with that sensitivity in return for what appears to be a lot more speed? You see, I've been doing these four speed tests for just over two years now and the last 16 months closely monitoring wind conditions. So if we need to, we can go back in history and look at the previous results. Now I'm fully aware you can pull apart my speed tests if you want to and I'll provide details on how I try and keep things as consistent as possible below. But for me, given possible anomalies, what I tend to do is look for any consistencies, as I like to do speed runs at least a couple of times, which was a recommendation from you, the audience, quite a long time ago now. And if it's consistently faster with decent margins, then I feel like we've got something decent to look at. And looking at these recent results on the BMC team machine with the Creative 45s, with Vittoria Corsa Graphene 2.0 25mm tires, Comparing to all other speed tests I've done since monitoring wind conditions. Yes, not all the same bike, tire and wheel combinations, but 
Surprisingly, this combination has been easily the fastest up the Gindia climb, which I did expect given the weight of the wheels at 1,250 grams, but surprisingly, easily the fastest on the false flat incline and decline, which I did not expect, and sort of middle ground for the decline. So in other words, the Creative 45s have cleaned up on three out of four segments. Now for notable reference, with these previous speed runs, I did some runs on the BMC team machine with the exact same tires on the KPS 60 millimeter wheels and another BMC team machine run on the Caden Decadence 45 millimeter wheel. So the same rim profile, although the tires I used with the Caden runs with the Vittoria Corsa Control graphene 28 millimeters. I'll link to that speed test data below if you want to check it out for yourselves and just know that the creatives are compatible with a 28 millimeter tire. I'm running 25s purely on the basis that the BMC team machine back end is already soft slash comfortable enough and I find a 28 millimeter tire is just too much for that particular bike. Now given these results, these speed test results, I doubt that the creatives are gonna be spending too much time off my bike now. And I feel that that speed production, a major factor in that is coming from the hubs, which Aaron's gonna deep dive into now. It's a pretty simple system. I mean, I'm not gonna get punchies out because they are so smooth and perfect. So I, I, I kind of want to leave them alone. Yeah. Same as ever, dust cap. I have not touched these, but as you see from the factory, I haven't done that. Yeah. So from the factory, they are greased. Same as the other hubs, they have a sleeve that runs through the bearing. Pretty obvious there. On the other side, you see this beautiful CNC. We've got a micro adjuster here. Um, that tiny adjuster, you see how sensitive this is? I mean, it's ridiculous. That micro adjuster will just preload the hub bearing and it is very, very sensitive. So you need to have refined movements on it. Yeah. Take, it's delicate, right? Delicate for his adjustment, but then when you're riding, you still have to set and forget. And since you brought them in from your first few rides, Perfect. I wouldn't even chew them. Yep. Nice and stiff. I'm looking forward to seeing how your speed test go because I think they're going to rip. And then the rear hub is ridiculously easy, smooth. You can just see everything just moves with it. You put your little pinky finger on it. It is effortless. Mm. So we've got pretty much an open bearing there. Well, it's got a dust seal on the bearing, but there's no none of that big rubber sealing, nothing to restrict it. I've already just slightly loosened this off so you can see what's going on. So we just pull this apart. So these run two 17 mil spanners to open up the hub. You don't want to uh, uh, adjust the micro adjuster because it's set from the factory unless you have any kind of end float, which we've discussed before. So the cap comes off. And then with this free hub, this is a little bit different again. You'll see how cool it is. This runs um, an O-ring. This little O-ring here is your little seal as well, but it just holds everything in place. That's how lightweight it is. Now don't forget these are ultra lightweight hubs. So this is, I think 146 grams for the whole hub. Right. Which is like, for a rear hub. The yeah. front hub's 66 grams. Just if you take an SV15 tube like that, yeah. a long 60 mil valve, I think it comes out 100 grams. It's 106 grams in this case. There you go, they're free hub body. Pulls, springs, O-rings, and two bearing, and that way, 40, 40 grams. grams. Oh my goodness. Older DT Swiss Specialized. Yep. 65 grams, so it's still a premium free hub body, but just goes to show, crazy, 40 grams even. Yeah. So internally, yeah, these are all running enduro bearings. These are an ABEC 5 style bearing. And as I said to you, they are a finesse hub. So there's a warning sticker there. As it says, strictly <laughs> follow instruction manual, incorrect greasing can cause hub failure. And that goes along the lines of what we just did prior with the Kogel bearings was that if you're using heavy viscosity grease, it creates dramas with free hub body bearings. Yep. In this case, it will actually um, affect the way in which the hub works and therefore it would damage the hub. Yeah, That's okay. how fine and refined these are. So they're beautiful, I love them. Like I said, for an everyday use, possibly not what everybody would want, yep. a normal kind of client, yep. but I think anyone that wants premium stuff, you're just gonna notice a difference. There's a lot of nice hub, bearing, hub, um, hub manufacturers out there. This is not the one and only, but it's just, this is the nicest one of the lot that you've brought me. Yeah, okay. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Cool. So, because DT Swiss make a very nice hub as well. Yep. Um, but this is just next level in my opinion. Okay. Rear one's the same, trued up, no truing required, sat perfectly. And that's probably because they've been handmade by someone in Melbourne yep. and they've done everything that I've kind of spoken about. They would have followed all those same protocols and yep. therefore it's 
end result is a perfectly made wheel, yep. that's what you get when they're handmade. You can still have handmade in Asia or wherever, yep. but if they're mass produced handmade, they're still gonna be speeding them out of there. Yes. Whereas these guys, I'm guessing, take a lot of you know pride and attention into detail, which yep. is what, what you're paying for. 